Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for our first hot topic, and this one says, Reps urge crackdown on fuel hoarding by security agencies. The House of Representatives Committee on Petroleum Resources, Downstream and Midstream, have urged security agencies to clamp down on fuel marketers hoarding petrol and engaging in the arbitrary increment in the price of the premium commodity. Now joining us to have a conversation is Bolan Olujede, is a public affairs analyst Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we've seen this um, fuel scarcity happen in a few days now. I remember on Monday people were thinking, oh, maybe it's not that bad. But by Tuesday, you couldn't even find the commodity to buy. And even if you find it, it is very expensive. Now, well, the reports that some people or some marketers are just hoarding this and well, reps have even called it economic sabotage, or people have called it economic sabotage right now. What do you think about hoarding of the fuel, if there's even anything as that, or maybe NMPCL is just not providing enough? And then, obviously, this talks about why we're not refining our products and so many other things, but I want to get your take on this first. Well, it's a typical cycle. Uh, we have seen it over and over and over again. Um, I, 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 I think... Even since the military day, I can, I can still remember vividly uh, the Abacha days for scarcity. Uh, all the way till now, that will be probably like three decades uh, of my own vivid memory of world problems in this country. The cycle is the same. There is a scarcity. Scarcity could be caused by several reasons. A logistic problem, which in my opinion, um, shows that we still have not been able to get right um, our logistic planning as far as this imported product is concerned. So sometimes it's also uh, for several other reasons where you have um, a single importer, for example, if, if things are not going right or there's an error in the arrangement by this single importer, then there will be scarcity. Once this scarcity appears, some filling stations will not have filled, others will have. Then the second layer of the scarcity begins. So those who have the poor will decide not to sell, they will throw them, or they will sell at night, or they will sell beyond the, you know, when they're selling the day, they sell beyond the regulated prices. And there will be a reason why they do that. They will, there are excuses around, oh, I got it at an expensive price, too. Uh, but we all know that it is not all the time that has to, that is real. Sometimes they just play on the reality of the forces of the market. A product has become scarce, so the supply is limited, and the demand has not changed. Therefore, let me abuse the process by adding some price on top of it. This is a typical cycle. A real scarcity, and upon it is layered an artificial scarcity, and the people suffer. Hmm. So, um, we, it, the, the current one we are facing is not particularly different. There were logistic issues um, creating certain scarcity. There were even stories about how uh, some of the people we imported from, their, their facilities are undergoing uh, turnaround maintenance and all the stuff. But for me, those are still excuses. Um, we, we, need, we need to find new things and be able to perfect the process. Um, and then after that scarcity, real scarcity has been in place, then the second layer of scarcity has come on top of it, which is people holding the products. Now, one of the problems that could be ameliorated by local production is this issue of uh, logistics, number one, uh, because the logistic changes dramatically once we're producing in Nigeria. So uh, it's just a matter of moving from our own refineries, which are in country, to the places where they are required to this depot and to the filling station. Um, so the, the, the logistic changes dramatically. Number two is the fact that issues around, oh, uh, the refineries are undergoing, undergoing turnaround maintenance. Uh, we would have been able to plan better because the refineries are here and uh, they are ours. So you imagine a situation in which the government refineries that are working, uh, say Wari is working, Potakot is working, say Dangote, the private re refinery is working. I believe you will be able to coordinate better 
our own product needs. So we will prioritize our own needs. Maybe it is the export part of it that may suffer under those kind of situations in which there is a constrained capacity in country for, for, from the refinery. Yeah, but well, the refineries are not producing for now. They're not producing the PM. Well, um, I, I didn't understand how the entire refineries in Europe just got up and said we're doing turnaround maintenance at this point, so uh, it now affected us. But my question is, I don't seem to understand, I'll still be asking this question all the time, how is it that it is the NNPCL that is still saddled with the responsibility of importing fuel? Because it seems as if when they cough, everybody, or when they sneeze, everybody uh, catches mm -hmm. a cold. So. What level of, of, of uh, privatization, what level of, of work was done that they told us that uh, MMPC is now a private company or a limited liability company yeah. or something and the market is open for everybody else? How is it that everybody still rely, relies on NMPCL? NMPC is still the government. As we are today, only the government has a thick skin to be able to handle what is going on with the stability of the currency. There is no importer that we jump into a market in which the dollar, because don't forget this is an imported product, in which the dollar might be uh, 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 1,200 like we had in sometimes in February, uh, when you are importing, and by the time the product is there, by the time your LC obligations are due, that same dollar is 1,800. Nobody, no, there is no reasonable businessman who will jump into that market. It doesn't exist. So, one of the problems that we must also fix, if we are going to be able to relieve an MPC from being the sole importer of this product, is the stability of the FX, the exchange rate. And it is not just affecting fuel anyway, but we're, because we're talking about fuel today. Mm. That's yeah. why the purpose is on fuel. It is an imported product. The marketers will not go into an imported product with the huge risk of making a loss that will wipe out the entire capital. If you look at financial at the end of 2000, I mean 2023, you will see how entire capital of behemoth in this country were wiped out by foreign exchange uh, uh, problem. So it is that same problem that will not allow uh, an open floor for in which everybody can say, I'm jumping into that market, I want to start importing my product. For now, under the circumstances we're talking about, only NMPC, because NMPC has the power of the government behind it, can step into that place and do these things. That is the, the explanation about NMPC remaining the sole importer. When we get the exchange rate stability right, it becomes easier for other participants to jump into that. Mm. Okay, so since we're talking about um, you know the scarcity of the product, and you know you've you've said maybe logistic um, logistic issues could be um, one of the main reasons why we're not seeing this. Then what is the government doing to ensure that people can you know easily access these products now? First things first, fuel subsidy is gone, so this product is expensive for everybody. But even if you're looking, even if you have the money to pay for it, finding it is difficult. So what are they doing? I know they've said um, in about 15 days there's like an emergency um, um, you know, mechanism that they're going to use to pump in and not fuel. But how do people get this commodity now? Because a lot of people will be losing money. The woman who's selling who needs to cool her drinks obviously needs fuel to run. Um, the, the barber shop needs fuel to run. People need electricity. People need, you know, fuel. Maybe not just, maybe not just diesel, but even petrol as well. And this is something that we can't find. So what happens between now and the 15 days of emergency period when we're going to see this? Are we going to be losing a lot of money in our economy? Well, um, apparently uh, the, the product are already being brought in. They have been made available. Um, I belong to um, a, a group WhatsApp of about two, over 200 people who are involved uh, in that uh, business. Mm -hmm. And even this morning, it has been announced on that particular platform. It's not a government platform. It's private people who are doing their own business. Mm -hmm. uh, saying, you know, announcing the arrival of two vessels at two of the uh, 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 
independent marketers uh, depot. So um, the, the products are coming in. The only problem is it takes a while of the products coming in before it percolates the entire nooks and cranny and we can see the queues totally disappear. It takes a while. So um, I, I expect that over the next few days, um, we will begin to see those queues gradually disappear. It's a cycle we are now used to. However, we must, what we need to do is to prevent those situations in the first instance. We already know it's a fairly big country. And all this well, for example, when they come, they will come to the, the coastal, coastal region, probably 90% of them in Lagos. So if the man in Medugri is going to get ill, he comes to Lagos to come and lift from a depot. So all those things take uh, some processes, and that's why it takes a while for this product to percolate to every part of the country, and we begin to see uh, the relief. So my challenge to NMPC will be to say, look, We've been doing these things for decades. Can we perfect these logistic issues? Can we perfect even the, the circumstances that lead to this scarcity? Can we make it make make it a very real situation that even before that real situation occurs, um, we will have had all the plan B. Oh, I have the reservoir here. This is how much I have in my reservoir. If this happens, this is how I'm going to mobilize the content and ensure that it doesn't cause trouble in the system. We are at a level where we should be able to achieve that. We should be able to achieve that. It is. It is not. It shouldn't be magical. But beyond the perfecting the importation, is making the in-country refining to happen for us. The postponement, oh, it will start producing next month. Oh, it is mechanical completion. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is commercial completion. Let us be able to close out all these matters and stop the talk. Let's begin to walk the talk. Let's see the product coming up. Private refineries, public refineries. That will help a great deal uh, as far as planning this product is concerned. Okay. Of course, we are some, you answer, you talk about the economy. Of course, the economy suffers. Yeah. The economy is tremendous. Now, in a capitalist economy like we are, well, on paper, um, <clears throat> operating, uh, how much powers do the government have to regulate, as it were, these people who are perceived to be hoarding their fuel? Because if we understand what it is, everybody has the right to do whatever he wants to do in a capitalist economy, maybe, uh, because that's how it looks like. So how much powers do the government have in regulating these uh, businesses of people who are, who are choosing to sell their products the way they choose to sell their products? Well, we, it, it's not exactly capitalist as it appears. Um, there are still, I mean, the other time you mentioned the issue of subsidy, mm. uh, and we must ask ourselves, if an imported product can sell for the same price when dollar is uh, 800 and when dollar is 1,200 or when dollar is 1,500, um, it's, it's a question I will not bother to answer, but to chew it in our, in our mind. So, um, essentially, uh, there are elements of subsidy in the system as it were, even today. Now, who is providing that subsidy? government. So he who pays the piper should be able to call the team. The government is saying, look, I am still putting my money. It's not, it's not coming to admit that there might be element of subsidy anyway, but like what, I just put something on the table for you to chew on. So him who, uh, 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 you know, pays the piper, should have the right to call the team. I'm, 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 I'm providing this product. We have established that the sole importer has remained an MPC. So the power to control to, is still there. Apart from that, I do not think that we yet have a total uh, uh, a situation in which um, uh, it, 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 these people are not importing anything now. So why are they determining their price? They, everybody is buying from them from the same source. So, the, the, the price differential 
should be something that government can speak to. I am the one who is importing it. I am the one who is selling it to you. I know how much I sell it to you. So what are these additional price that you are putting on top of it that I should not be able to speak? So government can speak to that because they are the sole informer. Well, that just sounds like um, the regulations for the BDC. So if we're giving this to you, we tell you the markup where you have to sell it. But I'm just wondering, so what is the government doing? Aside, because um, you've said this is a cycle, this is something we face every now and again. What is the um, sustainable way to ensure that we're not in this crisis as often as we see? Okay, um, some of the things we need to do is to remove uh, the, at least gradually remove the distortion that we currently have. It will take a while because government is trying to balance a whole number of things. Um, you say, oh, subsidy has been removed. But after subsidy was removed, there was exchange rate instability. We saw how exchange rate has gone from 600 or 700. It went all the way to 1,900. Mm. So that alone is capable of defeating totally the issue of removing subsidy. So when you remove the subsidy and you expect the price to calibrate accordingly to what you are seeing in the market, but if the market itself is distorted by the exchange rate, then you are unable to implement a full deregulation of the market. So government will need to tackle the distortions that are making it impossible for the market to be totally deregulated as it desires. Without that, there will always be this significant hand of the government in now pricing and determining how we remain at uh, 600 naira, even when there has been 50% devaluation of currency and, and, and all of that. Then we should perfect this logistics. For as long as we have not been able to get the local refineries to start producing PMS in the quantities that we need, then we need to perfect those issues that are bring that bring the scarcity from time to time. The issues have never changed. They are typically at least 99% the same set of issues. So by now, for over decades, three decades that we've been importing this, maybe even four decades, um, we should have been able to perfect. And we should challenge the institution that is responsible to perfect that system and avoid scarcity situation. And then at the third level, let's make our local refineries work. That is the ultimate way to go. Let's produce enough for ourselves to consume and let's be able to export to other, even if it is just other parts of Africa, and make foreign exchange. But without fixing the distortion, without perfecting the logistics, the same problems that have been coming in all the while, and eventually being able to produce locally, this problem as it has been, as it was, so is it now. And so will it continue to Well, we have a long way to go. A very <laughs> long way to go. The Kaduna very refinery long. is at 40% completion. And they are promising us that at the end of the year, it will start producing, uh, um, uh, putting out like a... a pr Producing, yes, mm -hmm. at 60% of its capacity. What's and happening with the Port Harcourt refinery? Okay, we've been told it's, it's been worked on and all that. We've not mm -hmm. seen anything. And the fuel subsidy uh, persists. In fact, um, there was a clip I saw where a particular filling station was selling fuel, but you have to buy meat pie before, I saw that. <laughs> before you can get fuel. I saw it that. It's funny. It was quite hilarious. It's very funny. Well, I think we might just have to wrap it up yes. at this point. Yes, mm -hmm. this is where we have to wrap up on this segment. Well, I want to say thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Right. Thanks. We're speaking with Belaho Olujede. He's a public affairs analyst. And we've just been talking about the clampdown on uh, marketers hoarding fuel. And that mm -hmm. is as a result of the fuel scarcity that we're facing in the country at the moment. We'll go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us.